Hello friends of the program. On this occasion I want to deal with a topic that is very nice. An exciting topic for the form of discussion of approaches that are created around it and it is the colors of the horses, the coats. For a long time I have liked the subject and I took on the task of writing a book based on many studies on many questions, on many consultations, with people very knowledgeable on the subject. That book that came out on August 15, 2016, is The Horses and Their Basic Colors. And another one. This book is precisely because of the questions and queries that I have been asked, that have been directed not only from the regions of our country, but from many parts of the world, where they have acquired the book that is sent to them by mail, that is sent to them by sending it to where they request it. In many parts of Europe, in North America, in Central America, South America, where we all have to do with the relationship of horses and it is an exciting topic, because it often leads to discussions. But this book was created precisely for the existence of synonyms, which are those words that represent the same thing that is within the Castilian language, the Castilian language, but that in the regions are determined with another name geographically, then they are synonyms, because that word, although different, corresponds to what is meant in Spain, in Mexico, in Argentina, according to the colors. So, with this approach and many questions, many questions that I have received in the mails and as I was saying, from all these parts of the world, I saw the need to make a summary, but then we will go deeper into each of the colors of the subjects that correspond to that color and other signs, hairs and signs, as it is also called the white in the face. The whites in the posterior and anterior limbs that are called calcitas and albas in hair signals, which is perhaps the origin of a saying. That says with hairs and signals, precisely because it is referring to the color of the short hairs that are those that go on the body of the horse, on the coat of the horse and the mane and the bristles of the tail that are called the long hair. The horses that have a difference that we will deal with those details later on. The colors of the horses are five, basically according to all the treatise writers, because it is a subject that has been related to treatise writers, specialized or biologist tennis players since many times ago, and it begins in an order as it is stated in many books, with the black, the chestnut, the fire sign, that the game sign is one of the colors that presents more dilemmas. Because many believe it a dark chestnut from a dark chestnut named as Zeno or from a black that presents certain tonalities. Because this is another subject that we are going to see about the shades of the basic colors. Those are the basic colors, those that we are naming first which are black, chestnut, I am new if I play salt and thrush, that precisely the color of the thrush or the coat of the tournaments of the thrush horses and mares is one of the main synonyms of the color of the thrush. Wrongly named, let's call it mistakenly in our country, because to every, because every thrush in our country is called moro, but it turns out that the moro is a specific color, a color specific color a color that has its belonging to a very special theme about certain animals that present certain animals that present that color of the moral. So, let's continue with this exciting topic.
So, as we were going in that order of the colors, we are going to start with the black. A summary of the coat of the black horses, of the black coat that has, as I was saying, its shades. But there comes a lot of the story also today, because there is a microchip, the electronic numbering of a horse. But in the past horses have been a main source of work and that it had to be that way. But one of the things that made the horse more big accompanying the man were the wars, were the position of command, the position of power of the countries, of the nations, of the empires, was the horse, then this made it very important the horse. After that, transportation and work. But where it had more influence was precisely in that the domains. But today the horses are not in that position of war, but they have resurfaced also in a very nice form of appreciation that are sports, work, delight, ride. As we all know, what are horses used for today? For to enjoy them, to walk them many times as a pet, a companion horse that there are many breeds, many there are many breeds, many typology in the ways of seeing within these breeds the trades or the usefulness of the horse. The trades or the usefulness of the horse. So we are going to have the black horse and those signs of hair and signs. It was precisely because of what I was saying that since there were no microchips or microchip and numbering did not exist, but they did not exist either, but they had some kind of fire numbering. The irons were marked by fire, but the horse when it was going to leave and it was given its, let's call it, its written identity, then it was described. If we can call it a passport or a document of the horse. All the signs were notified in that document. To give an example, for example, I cut a horse that had the two limbs, the front and rear on the right side, white legs and white hands and a white face. It was called two, except for the right side, and it was determined how the face was painted, which I will go into detail as you will see in images and it will be shown according to what we are dealing with in the topics later on and we will also make the summary as I have already said. And the face could be with lights or with a star, which is different. Not all the horses that carry are Lucero, because the Lucero, the star is different from Lucero and the Lucero can be waning. Lucero Montero, Lucero Corrido, Lucero Creciente with the ribbon that goes down and Bibi, BB is called the white pint that it has in the upper lip or in the bemba the lower lip and it is BB in the upper lip or with BB in the lower lip or with the BB with both that has the pint the two and if the ribbon is not very wide it is called cord. And if it is very wide it is already a white face horse or frontino. When the star is very big and covers the whole forehead, it is called frontino. That's where it comes from. For example horses. Whatever color it has, the right patica, the leg, the right hind leg is an angel horse. Why precisely in the denominations and descriptions, when the Spanish war with Algeria, all the horses that went were named because they had an event, a legend, a connotation of luck and they were. Once we are touching on the subject, there were some horses that had bad luck, and they were called the horses that went with apathetic right, Argel Escayola, Argel, Argelia. No soldier, nor any warrior, nor any military man rode one of those horses. I wanted it because it was a horse and they called it a horse with a bad leg. A horse that presented. But are these coincidences? Because the same thing that we are going to treat the colors associated to a task or to a virtue of the horse as that praise Tostado first dead that has tired. The Argentinians say that the horses tordos those that we call us or many in Colombia Moda that are extraordinary horses to cross the rivers are not very good horses for the water. 
and thus it has granted in different regions and in different countries its attribution of virtue or defect to the color of the horse. The emperors, the conquerors or the defenders of the democracy of the homelands, like Bolivar who was not an invader but on the contrary a defender of five republics, and used his white horse to ride triumphantly wherever he arrived where he was winning, and where he was showing that one could be independent of those kingdoms, and of those other forms that existed where democracy did not exist. We will soon try and we will come back because as we are making a journey, let's call it that, but we have to return to the black color, which was the back to the color black, which was what we started with so that we could give an order of the shades of black. Well, black horses are born with a very dark coat from a very young age. Colored coat, many times, and other times blacks that from the very beginning you know that that color is going to be black. That is a confusion that exists when the thrushes are born, because all thrush horses as we know those of the Lapizan legend that say that the only horses of the Camry and France that say that thrush horses are the only ones that are born black and die white. But it is a discoloration that when we get to the hole we will see but the black horses from the beginning are not born often so black, but in a very dark chestnut form. But from one time it is noticed that the definitive color and since they are born black they die black. Within these ranges of black of these tonalities, is the black ITO, which is a black that is born black without any pintica, almost no lucerito, without any white leg because within the blacks there is also what we call the white maculae. The maculae on the legs in the front and rear limbs and on the face, many times there, is also a mole. The barnacles which is the small black horse closed, but dull a dull dark black, There is also the unwashed black. The black, unwashed is a very semi-dull black, but without going as far as to distort or to go to the threshold, with the diluted colors that we are going to see also where there is already that color, that is very beautiful and very scarce that is called grulo. Grulo that is what we call turkey's mouse. Aritonado ashy that is the grulo that is the unwashed and the black a humbrio is a black that is also humbrio, that is also humbrio, there are a lot of browns. When there are many many chestnuts, when a chestnut has certain very dark parts especially on the haunches and shoulders that is a humbrio, this is how the black is presented and the humbrio black is presented as if it had on the flanks and all a clarification. Then the humbrio is already on the haunches and shoulders and the back and is called humbrio black. The Morcillo in the past and in Spain, which was one of the great kingdom's producers and suppliers of horses, for the conditions that existed when Spain was a great world power, as a kingdom that was extended from the east to all of Europe, and when in 1500 as we all know 1400, when they arrived in America, they extended to America, which was a very extended kingdom, that was precisely through horses for being one of the kingdoms that supplied other countries and other nations. Of war horses and in Spain, that type of horse, which is a horse so that we do not imagine it well the black morcillo, it is as if it was a rusty horse, as if there was but it is seen that it is black, and they present the tips of the short hairs a pretty or brown part and in the horse it is seen. It is the black morcillo that in Spain for that time was born much by the influence of the Spanish horse that had crossed it with horses of the low countries draft horses as we see today a great horse. That is arriving to Colombia and but that in Europe of a horse that has existed a lot 
for work, for walk, for exhibition, and that was a combat horse when there were no firearms, but they fought with spear and sword that horse of these gladiators of these warriors, who wore armor that we have seen in the movies came to Spain there in Spain many crosses were made, and many ways to combine the race from where they have sailed to be the race with those crosses from other countries and with those. That already existed in Spain as when we entered the North American horses and the Arabs, the Berbers, all these horses were giving those characteristics to the current Spanish horse, and that black horse, that came from there because the coat of the Spanish horse in the old days had a lot of black coat and people called Morcillo to all black horses in Spain. And later on the coat was becoming black due to the influence of the North Africans, and the Turkomans and the Arabian horses, and the black coat were the Moorish horses that we called, and that many people in Colombia call Moorish, to the thrushes that we are going to see that the thrushes, although of several tonalities of being the pocket horse and the jet horse that is a term that we use a lot in America. In Mexico, in Argentina, because there are several treatises and several nations and countries that have been very nations and countries that have been very equestrian like those that I am naming, Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, Brazil with its gaucho territory, they're in the south, approaching Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. Then those are the shades of the black color of the horses that already went in other programs that we are going to see and for example of the program we apply only with the black color and then we are going to put another then we are going to put it another color which is the brown color but very important we are important. The program, and when a subject is so entertaining, as some of us say, or entertaining and that presents discussions that present an interest because in Argentina, in Mexico, and in other equestrian countries as I have already mentioned, it is a topic when people gather around polo around the races discussing if that horse is a bay or if that horse is a chestnut. Very almost a bay they also call it but the bay does not have to have very precise specifications that we will determine and we will see them when in other programs so that the friends of the program are pending we will see specifically color by color already dedicated to him according to this summary that we are making because the chestnut is that color precisely named after a fruit after a nut after a fence that is in the chestnut tree of the chestnut tree and that chestnut that is in Europe is the origin of the colors of the horses because it is the origin of the horses, although we already know that some are going to tell us that the horse originated in America because of the heat it originated in America thousands of years ago, millions of years ago, I don't know how it was tasked there and the years in all that quantity for it to have originated in America. But it evolved in Europe, in Central Asia, and that is where the horse was made. It came already as we were saying at the end of the of the years 1490-90-92, when they arrived Aaron for the first time here and in the 1500 and something more when the horses came as such and already beginning when the discovery in America was already well established. The color chestnut is dominated in many parts as the horse color because it is the greatest number of the population in the world of horse is the greatest color that exists in the let's say that it is that almost all that we have seen because we are dedicated and we see a lot the presentations of the lapizan horses, of the thrush horses of the Spanish corns. But the chestnut color has been a very basic color within the evolution of the horse even from the first tarpan horses of the steppes from there of center Asia, a brown color washed from the primitive horses from where it is believed that it has origin all the horses already the Arabian, 
from the Turkmen, the Central Asians, the Nordic horses, the North African horses, the same Spanish horse and how they evolved in Italy, France, Germany and all Europe the horse the chestnut color and the color Zeno is a beautiful color that also deserves a very special treatment. Because it is a color that also leads us to be confused with that color of the chestnut. But the color Zeno has the characteristics of the Basafuego. And is as if it were a jet black and does not come from the origin of the chestnut. Because all this study out that has been of observations of years since the 9th century with the treaties of San Isidoro, from there begins to appear and writes about the colors Delos horses among the Zeno horse. At first it did not appear as such until the physical chemical examinations were made and everything else established, that it was necessary to separate it from the black or a chestnut, and it was. Given that field within the basic colors of the horses, because it was determined as a very basic special color in the horses with its marks of fire, in the trunk in the whites inside the buttock and inside the extremities of the limbs inside it is very beautiful with a very nice color with a very nice color. The inside of the limbs is very beautiful with a golden chestnut color that rises on a jet black are horses that suddenly within the PCI of the English thoroughbred racehorses is presented much is color precisely due to the selection. Then comes the chestnut sorrel that presents along with the chestnut and the largest number of macula. The largest number of white in his body of the legs. Hands and face chestnut sorrel horses have that genetic load for many years ago to have that macula, that white in the limbs and face. And after that comes the chestnut horse, which is the horse that also presents these tonalities, and we were saying that they are horses that from foals when they are born black are born very dark, but they get darker and darker as they get older, then they become a total blue environment until they get to fully white or dark brown or black horses, which is how chestnut or black horses end up and give purpose to their lives. So friends of the program that we are pending to see color by color in this exciting subject.